Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings you all in the most precious name of our common Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to the uh, meditation this morning on a, a unique uh, context of subject of mission. Mission uh, as proclaiming good news of Jesus Christ. While uh, we are going to contemplate and meditate upon this particular theme, can I uh, read Acts of the Apostles chapter 10 verses 36 to 41. Acts 10 verse 36. It is true, God sent his word to the people of Israel and it was to them that the good news of peace was brought by Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ is Lord of all. You must have heard about the recent happenings in Judea, about Jesus of Nazareth, how he began in Galilee, after John had been preaching baptism, God had anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with the power, and because God was with him, Jesus went up about doing good and curing all who had fallen into the power of the devil. Now I and those with me can witness to everything he did throughout the countryside of Judea and in Jerusalem itself, and also to the fact that they killed him by hanging him on a tree. Yet, three days afterwards, God raised him to life and allowed him to be seen, not by the whole people, but only by certain witnesses God had chosen beforehand. Now we are those witnesses. We have eaten and drunk with him after his resurrection from the dead, and he has ordered us to proclaim this to his people and to tell them that God has appointed him to judge everyone alive or dead. Friends, I think this is the crux of the mission in the church, or mission of the church. The message of the mission also is uh, very clear. Mission is uh, a word which can be understood in many ways on different contexts. In the national context, sometimes the mission is uh, entrusted by a higher army officer, perhaps military officer, to the lawyer person, maybe as a spy or as an agent or to do certain things in their own context, entrusted job and mission. In the context of the nation, the ambassador of our nation works in different countries as a mission. He carries the gospel or he carries the message of peace, relationship, partnership and the like. The Latin word mitere becomes the root word, you know, even to the English mission. Mitere is just to send from which this missio mission has come. The New Testament took the word from the Greek stello, I send. Apostello, from where this word apostle comes. All the apostles are sent by Jesus, their Lord, their master. So the mitere or apostello have given this beautiful word mission, which has been used by all kinds of professions and everybody has a mission today in the medical science, in the army, in the government, employment, and everywhere there is someone who takes the mission and he works for the mission. And in doing so, you know, there are not only the joys and the laurels, but also there is sometimes, sometimes there is suffering and struggles that we may have to encounter and endure 
in fulfilling and rendering the mission in our life no doubt the church also has taken this word mission even from the primitive church time with a meaning to proclaim the good news from what i have read from the acts 10 and of course everyone thinks that you know it has been taken from 28th chapter of gospel according to matthew where jesus our lord the resurrected one himself commissioned his disciples to go to the ends of the earth you know judea samaria you know proclaiming the gospel and baptize them in the name of the father and of the son and the son and the holy spirit mission therefore is a very important vocation and once you join it is a very pertinent you know uh, commitment and because you are responsible you are accountable and you have to come back to give the you know you are give your account to someone back home the eighth assembly a world council of churches that met in harare in zimbabwe which i attended as a young uh, servant of the church you know the wcc has defined mission as proclamation of the gospel proclamation is the charisma proclaiming gospel that's what in acts we read proclaiming proclamation of gospel by word and by deed diaconia is to bend to serve the people and by prayer and worship is liturgia means to join the community and to worship and in our daily life as a christian we need to you know witness that how you received lord jesus as your savior and the kind of uh, you know experiences that you need to share to people is maturia and also the teaching of teaching of the gospel to strengthen the people in different contexts in relation to god is a dedake and healing as the wholeness by reconciliation and joining the fellowship of the believers koinonia and these are some of the important features which i have told you you know they are you know they constitute the mission mission and unless we have this fellowship with uh, you know people neighbors and unless we have our relationship and our association if not fellowship with the surrounding environments like with the creation of nature we cannot have our relationship with god some men ask where is evangelism in this of course evangelism is the main thrust in the mission evangelism is not excluded but all through it inspires us as an underlying principle therefore the mitare or apostello you know they constituted this word missio dai is the mission of god to make us understand that mission is uh, you know not of us individuals not of our human communities but mission belongs to god and that is entrusted to the church therefore it becomes mission of church and in this mission the process of uh, proclaiming this gospel the focus is not just building or founding a church but mission is to discover the kingdom of god that was established founded by our lord jesus christ himself basileia the reign or the rule or the domain of god in mark gospel according to mark first chapter 15th verse the beginning of the 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 ministry of jesus christ starts with uh, you know the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of god is at hand repent and believe the gospel that is the beginning of the ministry of jesus which declares the you know arrival of the kingdom and it is you know important for us to understand that the coming of the kingdom becomes you know focus of jesus ministry he himself never told that i am baba or i am a swami believe in me later on you know it comes in a different context 
but his direction was always father in heaven and the coming of the kingdom of god immediately after announcing the coming of the kingdom the the you know he he initiated constituting a community community otherwise the band of disciples whom he chose where again he entrusted this mission to them after him he gave this mission to continue to proclaim but now the gospel immediately for them is gospel of resurrection of jesus christ in their particular experience with the inspiration of the paracletos the holy spirit inspiration of the spirit of god john 20 verse 22 you will find that the coming of the holy spirit which leads us guides us to no more truth people could experience kingdom of god at every moment in the a uh, person and life of jesus christ and sometimes it also mentioned that jesus himself was the kingdom and wherever jesus was moving you know the kingdom was moving along with him kingdom is discovered like uh, you know early church fathers of like orion who says that you know in jesus we discover the kingdom he is the moving kingdom therefore the reign of god is the essence of the messio die the mission of god our theme is mission as good news which has to be proclaimed to all not only to jews or to christians but because jesus christ is lord of all and this gospel has to reach to all people the promise of holy spirit that guarantees the realization of the basileia mission through the kingdom of god we do this by way of preaching preaching about the messiah how you realize jesus how you discover jesus in messiah the two uh, you know brothers andrew and philip go to philip peter to say we have discovered messiah they were introducing you know jesus as messiah i observe two functions of messiah here two kinds of functions the first one is Messiah's function is to demonstrate the power of God. God through Jesus the Messiah made peace. In Ephesians second chapter 14th verse follow you discover that you know he by breaking down the dividing walls of hostility and creating one new man in place of the two. It is a mission to reconcile the broken humanity with God. to restore the relationship between humanity and divinity by the demonstration of the power of god second function of messiah is the role of suffering servant as you find in isaiah 42 49 50 52 53 and other chapters the role of suffering servant the hebrew word beth a beth is you know the servant is not just you know destined to work to serve but here a suffering servant a bed the two poles of god's saving you know action through the you know living out as a messiah they very profusely come out in terms of the christological and eschatological functions of jesus christ that means how jesus is revealed as someone who liberates us from our context and the eschatological function is to to direct us to the coming of the kingdom of god the focus of mission therefore is not only the church which is visible ecclesia but it is the larger one in basileia the reign of god the coming of the kingdom sometimes you know our understanding is that kingdom is something that other world reality 
somewhere when we die and we are resurrected and in following the line of Jesus Christ, the first fruit of new creation, and then you enter into the kingdom of God. But Jesus says, the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. C.H. Dodd, a New Testament theologian, says that he a realized eschatology. The kingdom of God is realized here on earth, here and now, with Jesus. Like that of Oregon's, Father Oregon's understanding. That means that when the kingdom is coming down along with Jesus in his ministry, he has brought down the center to the periphery. Now you don't anymore see which is the center, which is the power structure. But then Jesus moved not in the central locus of the cities or palaces or the high esteemed people. Jesus always moved with the ordinary, you know, tax collectors and people who are always in need. You know, the people lived in margin, marginalized people, you know. That is the focus. The movement from center to periphery is the challenge of the mission. In Corinthians 2nd Corinthians chapter 4, 13, following, Paul says, I believed and I spoke. This is what Paul experienced. Any evangelist for that matter who lived out the values of the mission did not seek the position and central you know, opportunities. Mission, in line to following Jesus, in the model of Jesus, my another observation is that it is in the always pluralistic context. Jesus never, you know, narrowed down his mission to a particular group or a particular sect or a particular clan. He said, mission is for all. He, is, uh, he has come here as a good shepherd, a shepherd to all the flock. I have other flock which I have to cater to the you know, their needs and in which, you know, you find in his ministry, in his earthly abode, when, when he visited Kapernaum, there was an event of healing of centurion's, you know, servant who was paralyzed in Matthew 8th chapter, 5th verse follow. The centurion was a Roman and there was a healing of the daughter of Syrophoenician, Canaanite woman, Matthew 15th chapter, and wherein, you know, there was a struggle to, you know, capture the trust that what is in Jesus' mind. He was trying to, you know, arrive at after discussion that ultimately he is God of all. And then, when, you know, encounter uh, with Greeks, the Hellenist people, the Greeks have come to see who Jesus was. Because they were always, you know, they challenged to you know, the witness, witness and see something new in their lives. Adventurous people to discover something new. In 12th chapter of John, you know, they come to see Jesus. And, uh, you know, they also found Jesus as the real master and God. Finally, when Jesus was hanging on the cross and a Roman soldier pierced his spear, onto the side of Jesus and he found the blood and water, you know, coming down. And he said, no doubt, no doubt he is the Savior. So all these are non-Jewish people who understood, you know, the centrality or the uniqueness of the Lordship of Jesus. Or otherwise, who experienced salvation in Jesus. Even afterwards, during the process of this mission, you know, Peter's dream, the dream given to Peter was to kill all these you know, variety of animals. Where Peter plays the role of an orthodox person, that he would not touch them at all. Because he had to live with purity as a, as a, as a pure Jew. But then the voice was no, no, you kill and eat them. He was given this as a preamble and then he was guided to house of Cornelius 
again a Roman, an officer, wherein there was a unique experience not only to Peter, but also to many people later on in the history, how a non-Christian and his family and his members, his servants, received the downpour of the Holy Spirit, which simply means mission is for all. Mission is not limited within the four walls of a particular community. Today, I would like to say that the mission is beyond the borders, beyond the walls, beyond our own spheres which we have made our limitations. And across the fence, mission is beyond the borders. The other one is mission in the context of pluralist, pluralism. Now, mission in the context of a healing context, healing and reconciliation. God's mission is to continue. God comes into this world. He was incarnated as Jesus and moved everywhere on the edges and the borders of the human community, which is very on the human base. And he moved with all kinds of people and communities in the context of the brokenness, a kind of, uh, you know, outcast uh, experience, where people always lived in hunger, malnutrition. You know, today what we experience in different countries, inadequate housing, food, disintegration of public health, and grassroots level education, the basic education, Today, we also are facing the difficulties and tribulations that follow upon the corona, afflicted and inflicted people, narco trafficking, domestic and social violence, unfruitful daily labor, and all these, you know, the variety of facets of our human suffering. We could see a few in the life experience of Jesus only as a model. Psalm 130, Psalmist prays, Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. Our God is a God who hears. Even in the book of Exodus, third chapter, you find God, El Shaddai, and calls Moses and tells him that I hear the cry of my people, the groaning of my people. Wherever there is suffering, wherever there is a struggle, wherever there is a, a kind of a, a humiliation, oppression, they are my people. God gives his identity to them. Therefore, mission is dare to hope. In spite of disappointment, frustration, anger, brokenness, despair, maybe non-cooperation, still mission, challenges, you know, to dare to hope, even beyond superstitious life experiences. Mission is something to reach out. It is to translate the teachings of Jesus. It is also to try to live in his uh, footsteps. It is also to move along with uh, Jesus by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, by the guidance or in accordance to the will and purpose of the Lord, the mission goes. The mission, to me again, another observation is, mission is to bring justice. I am always interested to understand this word justice, the Hebrew root word that we find everywhere in the Old Testament, particularly in the book of Isaiah, you know, Sakarno, which also talks about Zadak. You, know, you, you all know the word Melki Zadak, you know, Malik, Zadok. What does it mean? There it is, you know, uh, the king of peace, etc. But here, Zadak is something like you struggle to, you know, to, uh, to bring a solace out of it. It is uh, engagement in someone's, uh, you know, struggles. Zadak, 
it is justice justice is not something like sitting like a judge and bring you know his his judgments justice uh, for that there is another word in hebrew mishpat is god also acts as a judge bringing justice but here that sadok is it is be part of someone's you know struggle god becomes one with the struggle of the people of israel that is why he gives commission to moses i hear the cry of my people that means he was asking him to participate in the struggle of the people the mission was entrusted to him god in the old testament is god of justice who was passionately engaged and intervened in the life of groaning communities god used his prophets to proclaim justice amos one of the very strong examples the second chapter sixth verse the prophet says for three transgressions of israel and for four i will not revoke the punishment very strong you know because they sell the righteous for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals where god wants bring justice even micah the 6th chapter you will find verse 6 to 8 now justice zadok again participate in a struggle where god likes this you know in this cause the end of uh, the struggle the easiness is justice throughout old testament particularly the book of isaiah you will find in chapter 56 and let us see 56 1 to 8 there are lot of references it says have a care for justice act with integrity for soon my salvation will come and my integrity uh, be manifest and then again in verse 8 he says it is the lord yahweh who speaks you know who gathers the outcasts of israel and there are others i will gather besides those already gathered and then in 40th chapter isaiah 29th verse he gives strength to the weak and weary he strengthens the powerless and those who hope in yahweh renew their strength mission is to liberate people by participating in the struggle for justice isaiah 42 verse 6 says i yahweh have called you to to serve the cause of right and i have appointed you as covenant of the people and light of the nations all those who participate in mission it is evangelism is something a part of it it is not all together complete mission and there is other side of it also one should realize that besides evangelism there is a struggle where we have to participate i isaiah 61 chapter 61 begins the spirit of the lord yahweh has been given to me for yahweh has anointed me he has sent me to bring good news to the poor to bind up hearts that are broken to proclaim liberty to captives freedom to those in prison and this is what translated again uttered by our lord as nazareth manifesto in luke's gospel you find on fourth chapter friends and my co believers mission is on the spiritual aspect to proclaim this gospel of jesus and his resurrection in line to the translation of nazareth manifesto i personally i must say it what we have witnessed in our land not only in our generation our parental generation they have witnessed a radical transformation in the life culture of the people in this nation the missionaries as visionaries they have come down to this nation they have built bridges not only the physical bridge connecting people but also building the bridges between the human cultures and languages 
and it was their contribution by which educational institutions were started be it you know zigen bach or plutro or alexander duff or robert turlington noble you know, all the numerable number of missionaries who have come geo pop you know kettel all these people you know they have come here they they have composed you know they have given us uh, the gift of dictionaries the linguistic dictionaries and grammar books they are the people who started the printing press and printing the newspaper the communication you know dynamic communication everywhere to everywhere we have seen the life and the living out of this human culture by way of the radical missionary life they have come here and they died here they spent their whole life in dedication to this mission the radical transformational work it is here friends my dear colleagues in this faith journey they have given a perfect definition of mission it is not limited only to proclaim a religious aspect gospel but they have proclaimed the entire total human transformation in line to the life of jesus as christ and messiah in line to the ministry of jesus to proclaim the gospel of the coming of the kingdom and to proclaim the gospel how we discover and realize and experience the kingdom of god but also to proclaim our willingness to participate in the struggles you know when you see the world events how this church has been constituted and formed you know there is always a lot of struggle this church what you see today in 2020 is not the same which at the primitive church where you began your journey the persecutions the struggles and even in the modern age in 19th century and beginning of 20th century the struggle in latin america the struggle in africa even now the struggles in korea in china in india it is not easy don't be you know attracted and be you know uh, carried away by seeing a wealthy church in the west that is an established church and in india of course we are in the making of our church i visited with a few friends who came from world council of churches but of course from my own life we visited kandamal after a great persecution there where the christians were shattered and you know chased to the nearby hills in orissa because my diocese is the next border to that and they went there still they are having camps there in the hillside we said there are army who are guarding you in the village why don't you come they said no those who chased us out must invite us back those who have shattered our houses must rebuild our houses those who have ruined not only our physical lives but also our morality and our internal feelings they must come and heal us and when will it take place maybe in near future let us believe it the mission is that we have to rebuild people who are broken you know what happened in the beginning i wanted to say that you know in colombo a couple of years ago on the day of easter you know the church people went into uh, the church you know to worship god but all of a sudden there was a big noise and dreadful you know sounds people were shattered in pieces and uh, finally you know you could not even see the body some of the bodies mission is not easy i told you a part of the mission is to worship liturgia a part of mission is to be in koinonia the fellowship and that is not allowed it is not allowed in different parts of the world even today therefore it is here we experience you know the mission 
as a borderless you know power of god we have to also see we have to go back to the you know the resurrection experience i would like to conclude in gospel according to mark chapter 16 finally and uh, you know when uh, the women went to the uh, tomb uh, there even the disciples went there to see the empty tomb the angel tells them he is going before you to galilee and why are you searching the living in the dead he is not here he is risen he is resurrected and verse 7 chapter 16 of mark he is going before you to galilee it is there you will see him just as he told you friends mission is to discover galilee it is not to stay back in the upper rooms in jerusalem it is not to stay back in the comfortable zones mission is to you know go along with jesus to galilee what do you find in galilee people were running you know to follow him and looking at them jesus you know had compassion he moved within himself i love this word you know moving within himself is uh, the greek word used is splanthne is someone put your hand into someone someone's stomach and catch hold of all the intestines and all the parts and pull them out the kind of agony that you feel jesus himself felt that the agony the pain of god it is the pain of god compassionate god he says i have compassion i am moved within by seeing them as the shepherd the sheep mission is to go with jesus into the context where the shepherdless sheep are existing he fed them 5000 people gathered there and it is not that you know only feeding but i am saying it in the context of corona how many people millions of people were everywhere to everywhere struggling to find a solace and a comfortable place finding to run for food finding to run for you know shelter finding to run for you know some medicines there is no one to give them the assurance everybody lifted their hands high the presidents and governors of different states and nations they said we have done everything now pray and people have come in thousands and thousands in different countries you know kneeling down on the on the public roads and public junctions and places you know praying to god by way of crying and groaning shepherdless we finally remain as those who are looking for the good shepherd to come and heal us mission is to explain to our people teach our people to come back to the holy feet of our lord unless we come back and recapture that lost faith unless we recapture you know that leaning and you know the depending relationship on our lord the living god we cannot get out of this you know pandemic it is where we are all living in galilee now a big galilee the whole world has become a galilee and our lord jesus like a good shepherd must come to show his compassion heal us touch us embrace us and give us that solace therefore my dear friends mission is don't take mission as a narrow you know kind of thing that just go and proclaim the gospel mission is more than that it's a larger context it is just going along with our lord jesus christ the good shepherd shall we pray lord of lord of life lord of the church father of our lord jesus christ lord break our you know minds to break the barriers and to experience this mission which has no borders mission in the context of the borderless community 
the church has to also capture this mission and to go beyond the walls of the four walls of the church building mission is something to engage in the struggles zaduk zakanu in the life of the people people who are god's people everywhere all those who struggle and weep cry and groan are god's people and we are part of it and we are living in that galilee where our master our lord the good shepherd must come in and intervene in this context of pandemic and bring us out and give us a smile on our face full of laughter and give us that peace that justice in jesus precious name we pray amen